Okay, now it's my distinct pleasure to welcome a fellow runner and a Boston marathoner. I have to say that I have not run a marathon, so she's a couple steps ahead of me. I think she would leave me in the dust, just like the road runner. Uh, I want to introduce my friend, Secretary Deb Holland. Secretary Holland made history when she became the nation's uh, first Native American to serve as a cabinet secretary. She's a member of the Pueblo and Laguna of the 35th generation and a 35th generation New Mexican. Uh, before her, her historic appointment as Secretary of Interior, Secretary Holland was one of the first two Native American women to serve in Congress, along with Representative Cherise Davids. After Secretary Holland speaks, uh, Brian Newland, the Assistant Secretary of Indian Affairs will be joining her for the Q&A. And I'm pleased to pass the floor now to Secretary Deb Holland. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Chairman, Dr. Payment. Really happy uh, to be here with you today and with all of you. Gwadzi haupa, greetings tribal leaders, colleagues and friends. Thank you so much to President Fawn Sharp and NCAI leadership for the invitation to speak today. I'm so grateful to be here also alongside my tenacious and talented colleagues in the Biden-Harris administration who share in the commitment to our all of government approach to strengthen the nation to nation relationship and normalize the role of tribal consultation in federal decision making. I'm joining you today from the ancestral homelands of the Massachusetts, the Mashpee Wampanoag and the Pawtucket people. Many of you may know that I ran the Boston Marathon yesterday, running as a part of who we are as native people. So in honor of my ancestors running tradition, I joined runners at the starting line on Indigenous Peoples Day, a day that for the first time ever was recognized by the President of the United States. And what an important step for our country. And so I ran. I ran for missing and murdered Indigenous peoples and their families. I ran for the victims of Indian boarding schools. I ran for the promise that our voices are being heard and will have a part in an equitable and just future in this new era. So my first update is that I did not win that race <laughs> and I didn't finish second either, but I ran my own race, thankful that creator has given me good health and the ability to run. In some ways, my race and my training reflects how I lead the Department of the Interior. The progress we are making may not be on the fastest pace, but it will be lasting and impactful. We have a finite period of time to get things done, and I'm committed to getting us across the finish line. There are some exciting updates to share since the last time we spoke in June. I'm standing before you on the heels of a monumental announcement. This past Friday, President Biden took the profound action to permanently protect the homelands of our ancestors at the Bears Ears National Monument. The living landscapes were stories of existence, celebration, survival, and reverence are etched into the sandstone canyon walls. As I said during the president's ceremony, the announcement was about more than just a monument. It was a demonstration of this administration's commitment to centering the voices of indigenous peoples and affirming the shared stewardship of our country with tribal nations. It's a marker of a new era that embraces indigenous knowledge, ensures tribal leadership has a seat at the table and demonstrates that by working together, we can build a brighter future for all of us. This new era did not come about on its own. It's the culmination of decades and decades of advocacy from all of our communities and organizations like NCAI, a terrible pandemic that exposed the disparities that exist in our communities, a climate crisis that impacts everyone in the country and the tragic events of last summer that forced our country to reckon with racial injustice. It's a combination of events that pushes us to forge a new path a new path that doesn't accept the status quo and instead leads us to build back better than before. We have a president and an administration that is committed to forging that path. As co-chair of the White House Council on Native American Affairs, I'm encouraged by the momentum I see. 
Cabinet members are making tangible progress at their agencies to address so many issues critical to our people. You've heard about many of those priorities today, including addressing the pandemic, climate change, and racial injustice, creating good jobs, and expanding access to sustainable energy, broadband internet, transportation, and clean water in indigenous communities. I will say that the political appointees and career staff at all of our agencies are doing incredible work to build tribal consultation into their processes and decision-making. It's something that should have been done a long time ago, but I'm proud to say that under President Biden's leadership, we're on a new and better path forward. President Biden is forging ahead on priorities that value and respect our indigenous knowledge to create a more sustainable future. Ensure indigenous leadership has a seat at the table to make decisions about our communities. Make stronger investments in our communities through the bipartisan infrastructure deal and proposed budget and give us opportunities to rise above the challenges our people face and build a brighter future for our children, our grandchildren, and future generations. At Interior, we believe that honoring our relationship with tribes and upholding the trust responsibility is paramount to fulfilling this department's mission. For too long, Indian issues were relegated only to the Indian Affairs Bureaus. If we're going to make sure that tribal communities thrive, that tribal sovereignty is respected and strengthened, and if we are to truly repair our nation-to-nation -nation relationships, then that means every bureau and every office should be thinking about our country's trust obligations to indigenous people. Interior contributes to this administration's work to build back better through our work to center indigenous traditional knowledge in our climate work, through our missing and murdered unit and implementation of the Not Invisible Act to address the missing and murdered indigenous people's crisis, through our federal Indian boarding school initiative to help our communities heal from long-standing intergenerational trauma and through restoring tribal homelands, many of which were lost during the federal boarding school era. Much of our work at Interior centers around recognizing the painful pieces of our past so that we can learn, grow, and do better. For indigenous communities, that means acknowledging and raising national awareness about the harmful and often violent portions of our country's history that contribute to the challenges we face today. The missing and murdered indigenous peoples crisis is deeply personal to me, as I know it is for so many of you. For too long, this issue had been swept under the rug by our government with a lack of urgency and attention. We're taking important steps to change that. In August, Interior and the Department of Justice opened the nomination process for our Not Invisible Act Task Force. And I want to thank all of you for helping the department find a qualified pool of candidates with diverse experiences to help inform our work as we move ahead on this critical piece that will help ensure our people no longer go missing without a trace. At the NCAI conference in June, I announced the launch of the Federal Boarding School Initiative. It was the beginning of a national conversation, conversation that was long overdue. Our communities have carried and continue to carry the traumas of our aunts and uncles, grandparents and relatives, who were taken from us, who lost a part of their culture, and many who may not have made it home. But now we have the attention of the entire country. This attention has not been without trauma. It's not easy to share our stories and read the stories of our relatives in major news outlets. I wish we didn't have to go through this. I wish that our children were never taken away in the first place. However, like our ancestors, we know that the sacrifices we make today are not just for ourselves. They are for the generations who will come after us. The Federal Indian Boarding School Initiative that I launched at the NCAI conference in June will begin the long healing process that our country must address in order to build a future that we can all be proud to embrace. Tribal consultations are at the core of this long and painful process 
to address the intergenerational trauma of Indian boarding schools and to shed light on the truth in a way that honors those who have lost and those that continue to suffer. Two weeks ago, Interior announced it would begin tribal consultations as the next step of the federal Indian boarding school initiative. The feedback we get from these consultations will lay the foundation for the department's report on this effort and for future site work to protect potential burial sites and other sensitive information. As we speak, agency staff are compiling decades of files and records to facilitate a proper review to organize documents, identify available and missing information, and ensure that record systems are standardized. The department is also building a framework for how it will partner with outside organizations to guide the next steps of review. My heart breaks each time I read a new account or hear a new story about how our children suffer. This type of heartbreak can take a toll on the body and the mind. Our communities will need more support as we go through this collective trauma together. Interior is working with the Indian Health Service to develop culturally appropriate support resources for those who feel the weight of trauma resulting from the boarding school initiative. We are here for all of you and your communities as we go through this painful process. More generally, I want you to know that you will always have an ally in me. My team and I are committed to working with all of you so that we can build a better future for our children and our children's children. And yes, I know that all these are lofty goals, but I truly believe that together we can meet the moment. Thank you all so much again for having me. I pray that your community stays safe as we continue to weather this pandemic. Please get vaccinated. And with that, I'll ask our esteemed and hardworking Assistant Secretary, Brian Newland, to join me on the screen so that we can open up for questions.